So here's what I want you to try for me. See how many structures you can draw with the formula C4H10. Four carbons, ten hydrogens. Pause the video, just take a few minutes to see how many you can draw with that formula. Okay, I'm going to trust that if you've watched this far that you've tried to do that. And if you watched the last video, and I recommend that you watch the last video, if, if you haven't you can see it here, you will probably have drawn at least this structure. And this structure is the structure of butane. So it's just a linear hydrocarbon, four carbons, and then there's going to be ten hydrogens branched off of it. And if you thought a little bit outside this box, maybe you drew this. This is what we classify as a branched chain alkane. Now I think it's fairly straightforward to see why we call it a branched chained alkane. It's, it's an alkane. Remember alkanes have single bonds or a single line drawn between all adjacent carbons. And it's branched because there is a branch or a uh, carbon coming off of a longer continuous chain. Now the name of this is not butane even though it does have four carbons and ten hydrogens, much like the linear butane molecule that we drew. In fact, we can sometimes refer to this as isobutane. That's the trivial name for this. But we more commonly call this 2-methylpropane or just methylpropane. So how did we come up with the name for this branched chain alkane? Well, there's a few steps, a procedure, that I want you to follow. The first thing is to identify the longest continuous chain. Not the straightest chain, but the longest continuous chain. So that could be one that twists and turns, but as long as you don't have to double back or take your pencil or finger off of the paper, that is the longest continuous chain that you're going to have. And you would name it as you would any alkane. So if we have a certain number of carbons, let's say seven, in your longest continuous chain, then you would have a heptane as your parent chain. Then what we're going to do is we're going to identify the groups that are branching off of it, or the branches. If there's one carbon branching off of the parent chain, we have a methyl group. If there are two carbons in a, that same chain, we have a ethyl group. And if there are three carbons in a chain, then we have a propyl group, and so on. Now it is possible that these branches, especially when we get into longer molecules, can come off of multiple places in that particular chain. That is, they can branch off of different carbons. So we have to identify by number the carbon that these branches are stemming from. Now, how do we know what number they are? Well, the general rule is we want to have a combination of numbers so that they are the lowest possible combination. Also, we want to have our first branch being the closest to whichever end we pick as one. So for example, if we had a branch off of the second carbon in a pentane, we would start numbering from the end closest to that branch, not the end furthest from the branch. So it would be branching off of the second carbon rather than the fourth. Then, if we have more than one group, so if we have, let's say, two methyl groups, we also not only have to indicate the carbons that they come off of, but we have to put a di or a tri in there to indicate how many methyl groups we have. So a dimethyl or a triethyl, depending on how many methyl or ethyl groups we have in the entire molecule itself. Now it's important to note, because this mistake has been made from time to time, that ethyl is not the same as dimethyl. Dimethyl indicates that we have two separate methyl groups. The ethyl indicates that we have two carbons in a particular branch. So be careful not to make that mistake, because as I said, it has been made before. So as with most things, I think the best way to go about doing this is to take a look at an example. So here we have a branch-chained alkane. We know it's a branch-chained alkane because, well, it's branched. And we know it's an alkane because all of the bonds between adjacent carbons are single bonds. So let's take a look at our first step, and remember, that is to identify the longest continuous chain, or as I call it, the parent chain. Now we have to be careful here, because if we just look at the straightest one, the one that goes right through the middle, we might predict that this is a 5-carbon uh, branch-chained alkane, or a pentane. However, if we see the longest continuous chain, that is, we identify the longest stretch where we don't have to lift our pencil off of the paper, we can see that there are actually 7 adjacent carbons, and that this is, in fact, a heptane. Now what we have to do is identify any possible branches that are coming off of our parent chain. And I think we can identify one, two, three branches that are not part of the parent chain. 
we can see here that the first one we've identified, or at least the first one I've identified, is a methyl group because there is only one carbon in that branch. We can see that we have also two ethyl groups because there are two carbons in each one of these branches actually off of the same carbon. Now the question becomes, when we start numbering this, which end of this molecule do we start numbering from? Well, we can see that if we start numbering from what I'm going to call the top, our first branch appears on the second carbon. Whereas if we branch from what I'm going to say the bottom, we are going to see that if we count from here, we're going to have the fifth carbon being our first branch. So we obviously want to start counting from the top and numbering from the top. And in doing so, we can see that we have the methyl group branching off of the second carbon, and we have our two ethyl groups branching off of the third carbon. So what this allows us to do now is put this all together. We have 3 comma 3 diethyl. Now what that means is we have an ethyl group branching off of the third carbon, another ethyl group branching off of the third carbon, and because there's two ethyl groups in the whole molecule, it has to be diethyl. The di is not because they both branch off the same carbon, it's because we have two ethyl groups in the entire molecule. So we have a 3 comma 3 diethyl. We then have our 2-methyl, because our methyl group branches off of the second carbon, and of course, because our longest continuous chain is 7 carbons, we have a heptane. Now, how do I know that the ethyl goes before the methyl? Well, it's alphabetical. So ethyl will go before methyl, and methyl will go before propyl, and so on and so forth. Important note, though, we don't consider dyes or tries as a part of that alphabetical process, we're only looking at the meth or eth or prop or bute in terms of the alphabetical order of how we name those alkyl groups. Just one final note in terms of the structure of this name. You can see that we have commas separating numbers, dashes separating letters and numbers, and that if letters are adjacent, we just put them right together. Now hopefully after watching this video, you've got a better idea on how to identify, draw, and name branch chained alkanes. Next up, we're going to take a look at multiple bonds in organic molecules. Thanks for watching.